This is the River Hamble. I thought I'd do a lovely little run down to the River Hamble today. And it's a bloody awful day here on the South Coast. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Run Man Dan, and this is week 14 of training for a coastal marathon. Hope you're well. So I said we're out here on a run out to the River Hamble and back for a half marathon. It's taper time. Yes, it is taper time. Just a half marathon uh, today. That feels lovely saying that. Hello, my wife did the Cardiff half marathon at the weekend. She PB'd one hour 51, which is a little bit too close for comfort for my PB of one hour 50. She'll pass it one day. So we are, as I said, on a half marathon run. So as usual, we'll go over last week's training in a bit. And then later on, we're gonna talk a little bit about different types of runs. So like recovery, tempo based run, that sort of thing. But for now, we're gonna run up the River Hamble and then turn around at 10 and a half K and run home. Oh, and a big hello to my auntie, who apparently is one of Run Man Dan's most religious watchers. So, hello, Auntie Pauline, hope you're well. And now the sun is out, and now the sun is in. <laughs> Standard UK weather right now. So what did last week's training look like, week 13? Well, Monday, as always, was the rest day. Tuesday, we did that big 32 kilometer, 20 mile run on the South Downs Way. Wednesday, we did the one hour recovery run. We got 9.3 kilometers from that. Thursday I did a 45 minute base run and then had a bit of speed play after that and a cool down where I got 12 kilometers from that. Friday was strength and conditioning as usual. And then on Saturday I did a 50 minute base run where I got 7.7 kilometers from that. Would have been an hour, but I had a busy Saturday. Kids have football, I had to get it done. And then Sunday was a rest day. So we got 61.05 kilometers from the week. So a really good week and 892 meters of elevation climbed. So that's a great last big week. <clears throat> now, of course, we're not gonna have anything that big again until the marathon. In terms of the 80-20 split, we've got 81-19. So very, very good split there. So, Overall, a really good training week. And I did finish it tired, but a good week all the same. But now that tiredness should slowly start going away now that we're tapering. Obviously we'll have a half marathon today, a recovery run tomorrow, a few hills on Thursday, and a base run Sunday. The weekly mileage will be less. I'm sure the elevation will be less. And then the week after that, it'll be less again. So I'll be ready marathon day in the best shape I can be. Okay, well, I'm almost at turnaround point. Um, we'll be heading back for home. Doesn't seem like that long yet. Oh, watch, telling me I'm going too fast. And on the way back, we'll talk about different types of run. So when you're training for a marathon or an ultra or a half marathon, whatever really it's really important to mix up your runs it's not just about quantity it's about the quality of runs too and you've probably heard me talk about recovery runs and base runs 
and all of that. So I thought I'd run through exactly what they are, what the pace is for me, which of course is different for everyone, but we'll give you a rough idea. So that if you want to incorporate that into any plan, you can. Now we'll start with slowest to uh, fastest. And obviously the slowest type of run is a recovery run. Now, recovery runs are always done after a high intensity session or a really long, hard session, which is why I do mine the day after the long run. And they're designed to get the blood flowing, flush out toxins, and just get the legs moving really at a very slow pace con compared to what you could potentially do. So for me, my recovery runs are done between around 6.30 and 6.45 minutes per kilometre, which in old money is around 10.15 to 10.30 minute miles. Then we've got the base run. Now, the base run is, in my opinion, the most important run. It builds fitness, gives you a good endurance base. And uh, I will do a base run on a Sunday, and also I run my long runs at base run pace too it really does build that level of fitness in the background. Now my base runs are done at a pace between six minutes and six minutes, 20 minute kilometers. That's around 9.45 to 10 minute miles. Now the idea is the base, base pace is supposed to be very comfortable and very sustainable. And when I talk about the 80-20 method, I'm talking about 80% of your runs are need to be base or recovery runs. Next up is tempo runs. Now tempo run needs to be a steady effort that you can sustain between 40 and 60 minutes. So ideally, it's sort of 10K range. If you're racing a 10K. Now for me, that would be in the region of around five minutes to five minutes 45 per kilometre. Anywhere in that range, which is between eight and nine and a half minute miles. Now, tempo runs can be challenging. They're not designed to be easy. And as I said, you should be able to sustain it between 40 and 60 minutes and it will be tiring. But it's a lovely piece of uh, intensity training to do when you're running or training for big marathons. And finally, we have threshold runs. Good morning. Now, threshold runs are harder than tempo runs, but you could run them as long as, but ideally, you want to sort of be in the 20 to 40 minute range. So, around about your 5K pace. The idea of thresholds is to get you running faster for longer. And it's where you run at your lactate threshold pace which is where the name comes from. So it's just on that cusp of being, working too hard that you can't sustain it anymore and working too easy that you can. For me, my threshold pace will be anywhere in the range of 4.30 to five minute kilometers. So around seven minute miles roughly at the moment at my, at my fitness. Now, I will very rarely do a threshold run on its own, but if I'm doing speed work, my wife often puts in 20 minute segments of threshold running. I actually quite enjoy it. You definitely feel like you've had a workout. Now you can take it one step further and talk about VO2 max runs, but unless you're training for fast 10Ks or fast 5Ks, you don't really have to worry about that. So there we go. That's a rough rundown of all the types of runs you can do and you've got to mix it up when you're training for these big events. As I said, it's more about quality than quantity. Now, I have probably done less mileage for this marathon coming up, the Beachhead Marathon, than I have for other marathons. Yet I feel very, very good at the moment. The proof will be in the pudding on the day. <coughs> but you don't have to run these huge distances every week to train for a marathon. Of course, you have to step up a little bit for an ultra, but a 50K is only five miles more than a marathon. So it doesn't have to be that much of an increase. 
it's not until you start talking about 100k, 100 mile races where you need to up the mileage. <laughs> but again, it is about quality more than quantity. So about 7k from home, feeling really good. If I can get back feeling like this, it will be a very, very successful run and training day. <laughs> so the weather's improved, the sun's out. So hopefully we can enjoy this last 7k. See you when I'm back. And that is it, half marathon all done. 21.1 kilometers in two hours, 14 minutes. Uh, the elevation won't be amazing, but I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good considering that was, we classed it as a long run, definitely 160 meters, not too bad. Um, it will do for this week, because I'm doing a bit of a hill session Thursday to get that elevation up a little bit more. But we're done for another one. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please do like the video, subscribe as well. Uh, looking to try and get to 5,000 subscribers, hopefully by the time uh, we hit the marathon. Uh, thanks so much, everyone. Appreciate it. I'll see you all next week for week 15, can you believe it? Uh, where hopefully I will be running with Stephen Cousins for a nice gentle 10 miler on the South Downs. Should be fun. See you then. Thank you. Bye-bye.